Hi, I'm John Wark, publisher of Sunshine State News, and this is a Florida Minute. Barney, let's talk a little bit about BP and BP's actions during this whole incident out there in the Gulf. Uh, what do you make of it, and, and, and you know, what's your view? Sure. Well, obviously, BP and Transocean and the other entities that are involved in this are all trying to fix this spell. Uh, it appears now that, John, it's both a human failure and a mechanical failure. Um, that's good news in the sense that both of those can be corrected. Uh, the bad news is that the spill is still going on. The other good news is that it hasn't hit Florida beaches yet, and perhaps it won't. So I think what we need to do is make sure that the government and private industry are doing absolutely everything that they can to mitigate the damage. And number two is make sure that the state, with the dollars that they've just gotten from BP, are going to use that $25 million in order to advertise to people around the world, come on, our beaches are clean, our beaches are beautiful, the water is beautiful, come on and enjoy your vacation. Do you think this all leads up to there being some new regulations proposed by Congress or the state to address maybe some of the safety issues? Or? Absolutely. And, and, you know, one congressman said that the, the well cutoff valve was, is supposed to have 260 redundant parts. Uh, and his question was, how can it be fail safe if it's got that many redundant parts? And I think that those are the kinds of questions that we need to look at. It, is it properly set up? Was it properly functioning? Uh, it didn't have the acoustic switch. Maybe that should be mandated to be used in the go. So I think there's a lot of issues, John, that need to be done. One of the interesting stories that I saw is that, frankly, if the rig itself, after it caught on fire, had not collapsed down to the ocean floor, the Gulf of Mexico floor, that they would have a better chance of controlling this spill. So one of the things that we're going to have to look at is how do we ensure in the future that these rigs stay afloat? Because if they stay afloat, then that pipe is up at the surface and you're dealing with it up there, not 5,000 feet below. So the tough question we all face now is, do we allow oil drilling in the Gulf or not? And most people are thinking, no, absolutely not ever. But the need remains. It does, and I don't know if you saw the Wall Street Journal last week, they did a national poll on this, 60% of the people in America still support drilling because they know in the back of their mind that they're still going to have to drive a car, they're still going to cut on their air conditioner, they're still going to do all the things that we have to do now that requires fossil fuel. Can we use fossil fuel as an avenue to get to a greener future? Absolutely, and we should be committed to doing that. But for the next generation at least, we're going to be committed to fossil fuel. It's either ours or it's foreigners. And to the extent that it's ours, it's better. Well, thanks for joining us today. Yes, sir, my pleasure.